<sighs> well, well. Is it cool? Or is it as cold as ice? Only if you're willing to sacrifice. You better take advice. I don't even know if those are the lyrics, but I'm just making it up as I go along. You want paradise? Welcome to another edition of On a Couch Talking Sports. As always, I'm Robbie. This is Kyle. Kyle, how are you, my buddy? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing great. Doing great. And we're yeah. hope we hope that you all are doing great out there tonight and whenever you may be watching this, whether it's tonight, three days from now, a year from now, we just hope you're doing great. And we also hope, speaking of doing great, that our sponsors are doing great. You see that segue? <laughs> Um, there we go. So, <laughs> actually, sad thing is I actually thought of doing that. Um, <laughs> that was premeditated. <laughs> go ahead and throw your tomatoes out, folks. I don't blame you at all. Um, but no, no, seriously, this big time shout out, as always, to our sponsors, Zyman Organizing and Wes Woodson. Thank you for the support of this show the support of Sports Blitz with Doug and myself, and the Sports Blitz of Screen Time with Kyle and Doug. And which we're hopefully going to get together a new episode pretty soon. It's going to be on the horizon. We'll let you guys know. We'll keep you updated. Hopefully so. there'll be a new Sports Blitz too at some point. Just Doug and I have been busy slash just lazy slash just <laughs> lots of whole, lots of yeah. lots of different factors just playing a role. We haven't done one for a while, but... <laughs> New episodes will be coming soon, I promise, at some point. <laughs> but anyway, um, you do get tonight, though, a new episode of On a Yay. Couch Talking Sports. Ooh. It's going to be a pretty simple On a Couch Talking Sports tonight. If you've seen some of our episodes, we do this. Usually we just run out of ideas for <laughs> episodes. <laughs> um, what? I thought we were going to talk about a whole essay on how J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and sports are you know, actually connected. I thought we were going to do like an in-depth analysis of the sport of Quidditch and like all the Quidditch matches from every single Harry Potter movie. Every year. Period. Even book two. I think we're going to throw in the books there as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Because there was some yeah. stuff that the movie couldn't even cover. Yeah. So. That, might be kind of Stay tuned. that might be kind of an interesting episode to do at some point is just like in-depth breaking down like the qu- different, quid- different Quidditch moments from Harry Potter. Interesting. I mean, I'll have to rewatch some of the movies. I think I'll for have that to one, watch but, uh... more than just like the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe one day. Yeah, that, hey, that it could change. be it could be something, or even yeah. just you heck, just YouTube it. You do. <laughs> no, I don't want to give away pre <laughs> secrets here. But anyway, getting back to the <laughs> task at hand before we completely go down a rabbit hole <laughs> that we can't come out from. Um, it's going to be a very simple episode tonight. We are just going to keep it simple and do another rousing edition of the Sue's Reviews yeah. extended version tonight. <laughs> the extended cut. <laughs> extended cut of the Sue's Reviews. And Robbie's, it's not really a final thought because it's like the episode, so it's just going to be called Robbie's Thought for tonight. All right. And there so I guess I'll start, if that's okay with you. Totally, no. With I'm, Robbie's I'm, Thought. I'm honestly really excited to hear what, he, okay. what he's going to say. Like So... If you know me, you know that one of my many, many gigs that I have is as a baseball umpire in the lovely field of sports officiating. And there has been a ever-growing problem, and not just baseball, but in many sports across all levels of sports, mm-hmm. and that has been the issue of shortage of officials. Um, just officials, the older officials are either retiring or stepping away from the sports and younger officials are just not joining like they once were, mm-hmm. um, the officiating and a has lot of... Has this been like more, like how, how long has this been going on probably, for? I'd say that even, I mean, honestly, as long back as like the last like decade, like last oh. five, five to 10 years, I would say it really has hit its kind of like peak. Wow. Um, 
And a big problem is just fan and player and coach behavior at games. No matter what level you're at, fans, mainly, you know, parents, you know, if it's like youth sports or high school sports, even college sports, can get quite obnoxious at games. They Mm -hmm. get all over the officials. They swear at them, yell at them, basically blame them for anything that goes wrong with their kid's team or their, their favorite team. Yeah. And I've, heard, just, I've heard a lot of those stories too. Yeah, yeah, it's really become a a a a, a tragic, not a tragic situation, but a very tough situation for officials because it just takes away the fun of officiating. And believe me, I've been, mm-hmm. I, I've dealt with some of those parents too during my time officiating that made me really question, like, do I want to keep doing this? And you know, I've stayed, oh, wow. I've stayed with it, but at the same time, it's just it, it can get exhausting at times. It's almost not like not worth the money and aggravation uh, to do so. Hmm. So why do I bring this up? You ask, because I witnessed, you know, a a prime example of what I am talking about just recently. So last Saturday night, I had the occasion to attend a. Uh, Babson College women's basketball game. And actually, it was probably the funny thing was, side note, it was the first time since, like, February, I think it was February of 2020, that I had seen a game in the Babson College gym. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was, like, basically three years to the day of the last time I saw a game in the Babson gym when I saw this particular one. And it was an NCAA tournament game for women's basketball, Division Three. Right. It was the second round of the tournament. It was Babson versus SUNY New Paltz. Just in case you don't know, SUNY New Paltz stands for the State University of New York. New Paltz. Can't tell you where that is, but it's Never it's, heard of it it's in New York somewhere. It's yeah. in New York somewhere. Um, probably upstate, I'm going to guess, because usually those state universities of New York are usually like more upstate New York, yeah. I feel like. Anyway, so I'm at the game, and... There were probably at least four SUNY New Paltz parents who the entire game were just ruthless to the officials. Like, every call that went against them, they'd be just, like, jumping all over them, yelling at them, cursing at them, like, just really being obnoxious towards the officials. And one guy, actually, in the first half, the very first half of the game got kicked out by the official because he was just being a jerk to the official like non-stop and then you had another fan who literally was warned multiple times by event security because he's like you know swearing and just yelling every single bat every single call against his team and even at the end of the game you know he basically made the statement which i think is, is is sort of classic to this type of fan of just ridiculous he made the statement you girls deserve better than these officials and stuff like that and I, I was wow. just like it's just a game Jeez. guys this is this is this is basically what where i'm going with my thoughts sort of a, it's like a psa slash rant slash just mm-hmm. thought it's just a game guys i got news for you the officials did not make your team lose by 10 points your team did that because you missed shots, because you turned the ball over, because you didn't play good enough defense. The officials did not do that. The officials do not win or lose games. Like, your your team, you know, one call does not win or lose a game. It is, it is just ridiculous to me. And again, I'm not perfect. You know, sometimes I get a, I, I think a call is wrong and I'll let the official know about it. Like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a perfect you know, I'm not I'm not an angel here. I'm not completely innocent in all of this, but I'm not You're to just the human. Level, Yeah, but I'm not to the level of some of these people who are just like just it, like I said, it, it just it, it's prime example number one of why there's a real issue with keeping slash attracting officials to all sports across across this country and it's just it's really sad and I, I think sometimes parents need to take a look in the mirror, not just look at reflect on their own behavior, but also what example we talk about parents, you know, as role models, you know, coaches yeah. as role models. And my question to them is like, what example are you setting for your kids when you act this way? Because they're gonna grow up or even when they're playing 
like on those particular teams, they're going to see that behavior and they're going to feed off of that behavior and then start doing it themselves. They're just going to continue to create a vicious cycle here. And it's just, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's just a game. Who cares if your team wins or loses? Like, 10 years from now, it, you know, you're not necessarily going to remember if you beat Babson College or whatever. Like, but people are still going to remember the way you acted at, like, that sporting event because you were just so obnoxious and ridiculous and it just it drives me crazy it's one thing like i said to get upset at a call like it happens it happens all the time and i get it i'm not innocent of it either but just to do it to the level that these people are doing it like non-stop every single call it's just it's taking it over the line and it just yeah. you know it just it, it's very disappointing behavior to witness and i sincerely want to apologize even though I had nothing to do with it to the officials from that Babson game on Saturday night because you know here they are by the way they probably know the rules and and they probably know the rules of the game better than these fans do um I'd like to see some of these fans get down there and try to officiate a game like Mm. that themselves uh but I like I said just and this is over the years I've just seen more and more of this and it's just very disappointing behavior and I really think we need to just take a step back and reevaluate our priorities in terms of being fans or coaches or parents of sporting events, kids in sports, whatever you want to call it. So like I said, that that's just sort of my whole thought of the matter. And probably it's probably not gonna change because it never seems to change no matter how much we talk about it and we rant about it and we, you know, wish that things would people would act differently i think unfortunately yeah it's just one of those things where you, you're you never going to completely quash the problem which is which is like i said just a very sad sad um commentary so yeah so uh sorry i i uh do you have anything to add you you sound like you were going to jump in there, no i so. was um i was just going to add, add your point too like i, I think if I mean, I, th- I think if people, although do start, like, you know, if they do realize, like, that there are officials that are, it, it, I feel like it is, though, going to get to kind of a tipping point. If there are enough people that leave and that affects the game overall, then it's, then, um, I don't know, hopefully that'll lag, at least, like, you know, get people to think, like, oh, how, how did we get here? You know, and, you know, so eventually something's got to give. Like, we, like, it can't just be, like, like this for, you know forever so hopefully hopefully maybe maybe people hopefully realize one day (laughs) one can hope i mean you're you're absolutely right one can hope but uh i just don't see any end to it anytime soon so but yeah it looks like it's going to be a long battle yeah (laughs) it's continuing to yeah continuing to battle it's going to be a continuous battle uh for for the foreseeable future but yeah like i said just wanted to kind of get that out there get that off my chest after uh after what i had witnessed at uh at that game the other night kind of just brought it all brought it all to mind there so i figured this would be the perfect time to kind of to 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 make my stance on the matter known so nice that is my uh my thought for the evening and uh if you have any thoughts about my thought please feel free to drop a comment uh in the comments below i'd love to hear your thoughts on this issue um or your experiences so now to sort of brighten things up uh, (laughs) because i kind of start off on kind of a a bit of a dim note there, even though it was very important. Uh, I want to kind of brighten things up by turning it over to my compadre here, Kyle, or the Suze, as he's also known for <laughs> another uh, exciting extended version of the Suze Review. So take it away. Thank you. So uh, I was thinking for this review, I'll uh, cover a game and a movie. And so I'll start with the game. Um, or a goofy. A goofy, oh, or a good <laughs> name? No, it doesn't matter. No, that does sound wrong. No, that's, wrong. Not, that's yeah, terrible. Let's no. not do that. Yeah. Not do that. Anyways, um, <laughs> we'll start with the game. Um, and it's actually, this, so this is a review of a game that I have loved since I was a kid. And um, called Golden, you know, I'm sure you've heard this little, little game called Golden Eye 007. 
And, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. It, it's just a game that pretty much revolutionized console first-person shooters as we know it. But, um, <clears throat> yes, it is the uh, GoldenEye that is based off of the James Bond movie, name, movie of the same name. And so, I mean, it, it, and the, the cool thing is that recently it came out, um, they actually did a re, an, essentially an HD re-release on the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch. So... Um, but I'm going to cover the Xbox version because it's got a couple more bells and whistles that the Switch version doesn't quite have. Um, nothing crazy, though. So what you're getting is essentially the same game that you pretty much know and love. Um, and it honestly plays really great. Um, it's, you know, um, the way you move around. The I, I would say the, the frame rate overall is probably the biggest thing that's improved since the, the, the Nintendo 64 version, the, the one that came out in, the, in 1997. Um, aside from that, though, um, it's f pretty much, f actually, mostly, uh, well, for the most part, the same game. Like, um, like, they didn't really add any extra features, um, but they did add some kind of more updated controls, so it actually plays more of, like, a modern first-person shooter, like a Call of Duty, um, but you're, you know, you are pretty much getting, like, the very core experience that you remember, but I think, you know, some of those things do... They do work a little better. You still do get a little bit of slowdown here and there in like different spots, like while you're kind of running. And that's the only kind of like gripe that I have a little bit playing through the game is like, you know, I, I was hoping that they would have kind of smoothed it out a little bit um, when it comes to just like the movement. When it comes to like certain things, like, you know, if you um, use those trip, those famous trip mines, like there, there's an, like an explosion. Um, you know, in the, in the N64 game, the whole game would slow down. Like, you'd be in, like, slow motion. It's, like, just kind of, like, the, the frame trying to keep up and everything. But in this version, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, they actually kind of got rid of that problem, which is really great. So you can actually move around and more, pretty much more freely in, in that sense. But when it comes to just, like, you're trying to, like, run, you're, if you're trying to sprint through one room or one area to the next, sometimes, like, your character kind of lags a bit. I don't know what... I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but um, see, one of the, one of the cool things that I I really wish that this game I think <clears throat> it's 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 still a solid version, and I had a lot of fun playing with it or playing it. Um, but I really wish that they kind of went the route of Perfect Dark. Um, so that's another N sixty four game that got a huge huge remake. Essentially, the core game is the same, but they improved everything about the frame rate and the graphics were pretty much built from the ground up and it looks like pretty much a brand new game and they released this back in like i think 2010 you can also get it for rare replay and that's how i got the copy of gold knife you buy the digital version of rare replay um which sometimes can go on sale so i, I would recommend waiting for the sale because you know i i would i don't want to pay a full 30 bucks for it because i already have the game on disc anyways but if you wait for it to go on sale for 750 that's how i get goldeneye so you can just download it right to your xbox and it's great i love it um but yeah it's um it's just i wish that they kind of like just took the game and just made it from the ground up and made it more like the perfect dark game that we got that would have been so cool because you it, it just would have looked so great and and apparently there is a version that's out there that's that's like that but they didn't release it and I don't know why they didn't do that. So I'm sorry. I got a little soapbox here myself a little sorry, bit. Like... Hey. <laughs> Box it up, man. <laughs> and it's just like, it just baffles me. Like, it's one thing if they didn't make that version, but they did make the version. They were actually going to make it for the Xbox 360. So you have this really great version of Goldeneye that they have some floating somewhere out there that, that you could actually apparently download. It's not really a little bit of a gray zone in how you, how you do that. It's like a ROM and everything. But, um... Hmm. it's yeah yeah that, that's all another i can do a whole nother series reviews on that how that all works but whatever but um <laughs> but um yeah i i don't it's it, like it's there the game is there i don't understand why they didn't just port that version and maybe you could have the option to toggle the graphics like you could do original n64 graphics or the new upgraded graphics i don't understand why they didn't do that do it <laughs> come on just do it don't let your dreams be dreams exactly like Sh Shia LaBeouf you said it right um <laughs> but so yeah you know not the best you know not the best remake of a game but it, it does the job it's not terrible 
it could have gone so much worse. Um, I still have a lot of fun playing it. Um, the graphics do look more smooth. It's not quite as grainy as like as when I remembered it in the older TV, but I, I think there is definitely some room for improvement though. So solid game. Just I just wish they took those few extra steps to make it like just they they could have nailed it. They really could have, but. Yeah, whatever. I'm not a game developer, so... Um, <laughs> but he plays one on TV. No, he I doesn't. Do. I do. It, that's another life. Another yeah. another alternate universe at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so then uh, I'm just going to move on to the movie, uh, The Brothers Bloom, um, which uh, I have way more positive things to say about that movie. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually watched it back, uh, back when it came out in theaters, back in 2009. And, um, honestly, after re-watching it, I... It made me. It reminded me why I love that movie in the first place. It held up really well. Um, it stars Adrian Brody and Mark Ruffalo. They play two brothers who are con artists, and basically, um, they run into this um, this woman uh, played by Rachel Weisz, who is a parent, who is essentially she's a very wealthy recluse. So she's like kind of just she doesn't really. Um, like like I'm not gonna get too much in the story, but she's a recluse. She's she's a rec- recluse, recluse. I think recluse, yeah. Yeah. recluse, yeah. yeah. And um, she's just basically like trapped in her giant mansion, and they're able to conv- and they're tra- basically trying to con her out of like her money and everything. But there there's kind of a fun twist on that, um, where she ends up actually like, she, she, even though she comes off as very kind of like a little bit, um, what is it like? Uh, like she she comes off as very OTL out like just kind of out there, um, like you they find out that she's actually a very very she's very smart she's much smarter actually to the point where even smarter than them <laughs> when it comes to them so she's able to kind of like catch on to what they're doing and it's a it's a really fun movie um, I just I had a great time watching it and the way they kind of broke down like their their plans to con people like it it was it was it was a lot of fun to watch actually it actually felt very much like an old school movie kind of from like the i'd say like the 40s 50s um it, it was great like kind of like the sting i i, I was uh, talking about it with one of my friends and he he made a good point it feels kind of like the sting kind of like the sting if you ever saw that movie um with a uh, um paul newman robert redford it's that that style of movie but kind of more of like a modern version of that um but and, and what i liked about it too is you don't really know what time period this movie's in like there's it kind of pulls from like different time periods and kind of throws it into just kind of the aesthetics of the movie and i i think that's really cool um so i mean the performances are great i love mark ruffalo and adrian brody and rachel weiss i the three of them like um are just really great together um and uh and there's all, all this, also some other really cool surprise cameos that I won't really mention. Like, it's just one of those, you have to watch the movie and you're like, oh yeah, I know that person. Um, <laughs> actually, one of them, I'll give you a hint, one of them actually has a connection to the Goldeneye movie. So uh, that's, I guess there's a, that slight kind of connection to both reviews tonight. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great movie. It's got a lot of heart, a lot of wit, um, some really good drama. Some scenes that even may, will make you tear up, I'm not going to lie um so yeah definitely uh definitely check it out yeah brothers bloom very good so thank you for two awesome reviews as always i know you would got a little bit on your soapbox there as well <laughs> yeah. that was tonight's episode that was the theme of tonight's episode yeah, it was it was just Kyle and i on our soapboxes just trying to make the world a better <laughs> place one one rant at a time <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Will we be successful? Probably not, but you know, but you know, you never know. If we even touch one life or change one mind tonight, then we will have been successful. Yeah, it'll be it'll have been <laughs> worth it. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, um, <laughs> that is going to wrap it up for tonight's episode. So, if you have a thought about either my thought or the Sue's reviews, please again feel free to drop us a comment. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you know, hit the bell, tell your friends, uh, we always appreciate it. And please also check out, uh, our other two shows, sort of in our little trilogy of, of YouTube here. We've got, obviously, the Sports Blitz with Doug and I, and then Screen Time with Doug and Kyle, and then obviously right here on On a Couch Talking Sports as well. And you can find us not just here on YouTube for this show, but Facebook, 
Twitter and Instagram, we're all over the place. Uh, these beautiful wait, wait. Fa- these beautiful faces are. <laughs> You, you can never get away from us, which sounds a little bit creepy, and I, I regret saying. Jeez, Robbie, what are you, big brother over here? Like, yeah, what, seriously, damn. big Robbie is watching. Um, <laughs> the couch guys are watching. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's going to do it for tonight's episode. Thank you to Zyman Organizing and Wes Woodson. Definitely don't want to forget about them. And uh, until next time, that's Kyle. I'm Robbie. This is our couch, and uh, like I said, we will see you next time on On a Couch Talking Sports. Bye. Good luck filming the best episode possible. Yeah. You too, Robbie. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Break a leg. Not literally, but just... You know. uh, oh, okay. okay never mind. No, not my leg. <laughs> you said break a leg. Like... The... Yeah, you said break a leg. I was just doing what Robbie was saying. You know, that's all.